boy named Jack decides to help his mom escape from the shed they're being held in by a kidnapper. She pretends to make Jack look sick so that the man can take him to the hospital, but this plan doesn't work. Following this, his mom then realizes the only other option is for Jack to play dead, even though she risks putting her son in danger. A few weeks earlier, Jack wakes his mom to tell her it's already his fifth birthday. Even though she's reluctant to get up from bed, she eventually begins her morning routine with Jack. After a while, she then tells him that she's going to make a birthday cake for him. Jack is excited about this, and he asks if it's the same one he always sees on TV, and she says it's the one. It turns out that Jack and his mom, Ma, have been living inside a shed since he was born, because they can't go out. He only knows about what his mom tells him and what he sees on TV. To prevent him from asking too many questions about living in the shed, his mom tells him that they're living in space. She also makes him believe that magic is real to explain why a man named Old Nick brings them supplies on Sundays. That morning, Jack and his mom work together to bake the cake. When they're through, Ma presents the cake to Jack, but he complains about it not having candles. As his mom says it doesn't matter, Jack asks why she can't just ask for candles from Old Nick instead of getting him jeans. Ma then says it's better to get more important things for their Sunday treats. Jack still doesn't look happy about this, but Ma says sorry and convinces him to eat the cake. That night, Ma prepares the wardrobe for Jack to sleep for the night. After Ma sings to him so he can sleep, he eventually wakes up when Old Nick arrives. Jack then looks at Old Nick from the small opening in the wardrobe. Suddenly, Old Nick sees the birthday cake and asks Ma if it was for Jack's birthday. She says it was, and he then mentions that he would have gotten a present for Jack if he knew. Jack eventually gets tired of looking outside the wardrobe, so he continues to sleep. Later on, when Old Nick leaves, Ma brings Jack out of the wardrobe so he can sleep next to her in bed. Later that day, while Ma is still sleeping, Jack sees a mouse inside the room. He immediately looks intrigued and goes closer to check it out. As he then feeds the mouse, Ma suddenly throws something at it. Jack doesn't seem to understand this because the mouse is real, but Ma says it would have stolen their food. As he then mentions that she killed it, she says she only sent it to the backyard. Jack doesn't understand this because he thinks the mouse lives inside the TV like his mom told him, but Ma just ignores him because she doesn't know what to say. Jack then asks why Ma didn't tell Old Nick about his birthday. She looks shocked by this and says he was supposed to be sleeping when Old Nick arrived. However, Jack mentions that Old Nick would have gotten him a present if she had told him. Ma says Old Nick is not their friend, but Jack still insists that he wants a present. He then says that Old Nick might have gotten him a dog, but Ma yells at him and says there's no space for a dog inside the room. As he also talks about his imaginary dog, she shouts at him and says it's something he made up. This hurts Jack, and he starts crying, though Ma eventually comes over to console him. The next day, when Jack wakes up, his mom gives him a toy car as his birthday present. This makes him happy, and he starts playing with it immediately. Later that night, while Jack is inside the wardrobe, Old Nick arrives and asks Ma if her son likes the present. She ignores the question and he tells her that she's always ungrateful. He also says she doesn't understand how difficult it is for him to pay all the bills, especially now that he has lost his job. Ma is shocked to hear this and she asks if Old Nick has been looking for a new job. However, he gets angry and says there are no jobs. Just then, Jack makes a sound inside the wardrobe, so Old Nick thinks he's still awake. As he then comes closer to the wardrobe, Ma tells him to leave Jack alone because he's most likely asleep. Later on, while they're both sleeping, Jack comes out of the wardrobe and moves toward their bed. As he then stares at Old Nick, the man opens his eyes and sees Jack. Before he touches Jack though, Ma drags him back. Jack immediately runs back into the wardrobe, and this gets Old Nick angry. He then hurts Ma and tells her that the next time she drags him like she just did, he'll have to kill her. After he leaves, Jack comes out of the wardrobe and hugs his mom while apologizing for coming out earlier. The next day, Ma notices that the room is now colder. As she looks around, she realizes that Old Nick has cut the power, so the heater is no longer working. She then tries to open the door, but it's already locked and can only be opened with a code. A while later, Ma suddenly decides to tell Jack what's really going on. She then starts by telling him that the rat from the other day is on the other side of the wall. Jack asks if it's in space, but she says it's in the world. Jack doesn't understand this, but Ma says there's a much larger world outside. She also mentions that she's just telling him about it because she believes he's now smart enough to understand what's happening. Jack still looks confused, so she asks where he thinks Old Nick gets all the supplies. Jack says Old Nick uses magic to get it out of the TV, 
but Ma says everything she told him in the past is a lie. She also shows him a red flower on the skylight roof to prove that there are trees outside, but because he knows that flowers are always green, he doesn't believe her. She then mentions that her real name is Joy, and that when she was 17, old Nick kidnapped and kept her inside the shed. She adds that she's been inside the shed for seven years without ever going out. Jack thinks she's lying, but she says everything she's telling him is the truth. She also tells him that she has a father and mother, who are his grandfather and grandmother. Despite all her explanations, Jack still doesn't believe his mom, and he even thinks she's telling a story, so he asks for another one. However, Ma keeps saying that he has to understand that her story is real. The next day, while Jack watches TV, he asks his mom if turtles and crocodiles are real. She says they are, and he then switches the channels on the TV to check out things that are real and others which are fake. As he now understands that there's a lot in the world he doesn't know about, Jack says he'll kick old Nick in the butt when he returns. However, Ma says she already tried to do something like that before, but he ended up beating her. Jack then suggests killing him in his sleep, but Ma says they'll be stuck forever because only old Nick knows the code that unlocks the door. Jack also asks if his grandparents can't come and save them, but Ma says no one knows where they are. She then mentions that only Jack can save them. As she then starts boiling a pot of water, she says she'll dab his face with hot water, so it looks like he has a fever. She adds that when old Nick returns, she'll force him to take Jack to the hospital, where he'll then ask for help. Jack doesn't feel too good as she does this, but he knows he has to do it. When old Nick returns, Ma tells him about Jack having a fever, but he says he'll go out to get the boy some drugs. Ma then says it's better to take him to the hospital, but old Nick refuses to do this. As he then heads out to get drugs, Ma feels disappointed and tells Jack that they'll have to come up with something else. A while later, she tells Jack that their only other option is for him to play dead. She then starts preparing him for how he'd go about it, but Jack looks scared and suggests postponing the escape attempt. However, Ma says he needs to do it that day. After several attempts of wrapping him up with the rug inside the room, Jack cries and complains about having to do what she wants, but she convinces him that he has to do it. She then tells him that after old Nick puts him in his truck, all he has to do is unwrap himself and jump down to report to any person he finds first. She then hugs him for a while, but as old Nick arrives, she immediately wraps him up. He meets her while she's doing it and asks what's happening. She then tells him that Jack died after his condition got worse overnight. Old Nick tries to check on Jack, but she pushes him away and tells him to promise not to look at her son before she buries him. She also suggests burying Jack somewhere with flowers. Old Nick respects her wishes and agrees to this. As he then takes Jack away with the wrapped rug, he tells Ma to step away from the door so she doesn't try to escape. Following this, he puts the rug inside his truck and starts driving into town. After a while, Jack finally unwraps himself and looks shocked to see how the world looks. He gets slightly dizzy at first, but as he waits for the truck to move slowly before he jumps, old Nick sees him and realizes that Ma had planned an escape all along. Jack then immediately jumps down and bumps into a stranger on the road while running away from old Nick. The man then tries to help Jack to stand up, but old Nick immediately drags him away. Before he leaves, though, Jack shouts for help, and as the stranger realizes that something is going on, old Nick drops the boy and escapes from the scene while insulting Ma. Shortly after, the cops arrive to take Jack, and while he's in the car, he is asked several questions about where he lives. As he slowly answers because it's his first interaction with someone other than his mom, he narrates how he escaped. He also mentions that he lives in a shed with a skylight. With this information, it doesn't take long for the cops to find old Nick's house. While Jack is then looking to see if they find his mom, he suddenly sees Ma running toward the car he is in. As they finally reunite, she hugs him and looks relieved that he managed to help both of them escape. The next day, Jack wakes up in a hospital while his mom is still sleeping. As he then tries to walk around, he looks out of the window and seems to be scared of heights. He immediately runs to meet Ma, who then wakes up. Jack asks her if they're on another planet, but Ma says it's the same one, but they're now in a different place. A while later, she takes him to have his bath, and after she disposes his underwear, he asks her why she threw it away. Ma says he'll get another one, and he then asks if it will be part of the next Sunday treat. However, Ma says he'll have plenty of treats from now on. Jack then asks if old Nick will ever find them, and Ma says he never will. After taking their bath, the doctor comes in to give them their meals. 
because he has never tried pancakes before. Jack refuses to eat. Just then, the doctor gives them glasses to protect their eyes from bright light. After a while, Jack's grandparents arrive, and Ma quickly runs to hug them. Days later, it is reported on the news that old Nick has been arrested, and this makes Ma and Jack look relieved. As they then leave the hospital, Ma realizes that her parents are no longer together. Since her dad, Robert, stays far away, Ma then decides to move in with her mom, Nancy, who is now staying with her new husband, Leo. After Jack settles in, his grandmother asks what he wants, and he whispers his answer to Ma, who then tells him that he can always talk to other people. Ma also shows him the toys he received as presents from well-wishers who are happy about their return home. As they're then looking at the yard, Jack sees a dog toy, and this gets Ma to ask if there's a dog in the house. Leo says it belongs to him, though he adds that the dog is not around for now. Ma then looks happy to see that Jack will soon get to play with a dog like he always wanted. A while later, Nancy shows them to Ma's old room, she then suggests cutting Jack's hair, but he refuses to allow it because he believes it makes him strong. Later that day, Robert visits to give an update on the case. While they're then having dinner, he seems to get disgusted while Jack is at the table, so he says he needs to leave. Ma figures this out and says she can't believe her father won't even look at her child because of the circumstances of his birth. She then tells Robert to look at Jack, but as he struggles to do so, she takes her son to their room. Later that night, Jack sees the wardrobe in the house and asks Ma how long they'll be staying at Nancy's house, but she says it's their new home. The next day, Ma gets annoyed when she sees Jack watching a movie on her phone. She believes he'll not want to do other things besides playing with phones, so she takes him downstairs to play with his toys. As she sounds quite harsh, Nancy tells her to stop worrying too much about Jack. Ma then says that even though she's supposed to be relieved that she's back home, she doesn't feel that way. Nancy says she probably needs rest, but Ma disagrees. They eventually get into a fight about this, and Ma also blames Nancy for getting her kidnapped because she was always telling her to be nice as a kid. She adds that it's what allowed her to offer to help old Nick and his dog before he kidnapped her. While they're arguing, they appear to be too loud for Jack, who looks uncomfortable. The next day, a talk show host shows up at the house to interview Ma about her experience. While things appear to be going well at first, Ma suddenly gets uncomfortable when the interviewer asks if she ever considered killing herself inside the shed. To make things worse, she also asks if Ma will ever recognize old Nick as Jack's dad. However, Ma says Jack belongs to her alone. Days later, Jack goes into the bathroom, only to see his mom unconscious on the floor after using an overdose of her drugs. He looks terrified and immediately calls for help while crying. Following this, Nancy and Leo get an ambulance to come over and take her away, with Jack looking sad about this. A while later, Leo tells Jack that there's a call for him. As he answers it, it turns out to be Ma, who is now doing better. She says she'll be in the hospital for a while, but he tells her to come home immediately. As she then tries to explain herself, Jack just drops the phone and heads to his room. Days later, he starts to feel much better, and Nancy takes him to the supermarket to get some supplies. When they return, she also helps him in the kitchen, after which Leo brings in his dog and introduces him to Jack, who looks happy as he gets to play with the dog. After a while, he's also allowed to take the dog for a walk inside the compound. The next day, Jack then tells Nancy that he wants to cut his hair so he can give it to his mom and make her feel stronger. Following this, Nancy helps him with it and makes his hair shorter and nicer. A few days later, while Jack is playing with a new friend he made in the area, Ma returns home and this makes him happy. Shortly after, she then says sorry for almost killing herself. Jack says he has forgiven her, but she shouldn't try it again. As she then looks at him, she says she's not sure she's a good mother, but he tells her that she is. This makes her happy, and together they start going out and having more fun. A while later, Jack asks Ma if they can go back to the shed. Ma is unsure about this, but Jack says it's just for a visit. She then takes him there, but as he enters, he asks why it's now smaller. Ma says it's likely because most of the things inside have been taken away as evidence of their stay in the room. As he then looks around, he says it's because the door is open. Ma asks if she should close it, but he tells her not to. He then says goodbye to all the things inside the room before telling his mom to do the same. As she also says goodbye, the two of them walk away from the shed and head back home. 